Well, good afternoon. What's going on? Let's finally get this started. First, let me apologize. Things are a bit crazy, undecided right now. A lot of things happen, but either way it goes, we're here. God's giving us another day. Let's talk about some Formula One brand new teams coming to the grid. And soon, sooner than later, a lot sooner than it was before. So let me first send a big shout out to Huey Dewey, the Wildcat, Mary Beanie popping up in the live chat. Let's go ahead and get this started. So, in my opinion, coming up this next season, 2026, I do think in some ways Audi does have a development advantage. Now, it's my opinion of, in regards to what I've known them to do. What's going on, brother, man? Had a situation, bro, but are we here now? It's my opinion, but just like Adrian Newey, and I think some of us, some of us look at the likelihood that it might have been a bit unfair, maybe a bit of hand feeding. And I'm kind of wondering if maybe this isn't somewhat of the same similar situation, given how much it took and how much things were changed in order to lure Porsche and Audi into Formula One. But there was a strategical advantage, a development advantage with Red Bull specifically because of Adrian Newey when it came to the ground effects era. And I would think that a governing body would consider this to be unfair to a level, knowing that the only engineer actively on the grid for a Formula One team that's had intimate knowledge with the ground effects is working at Red Bull. How much of an advantage does that fit for Red Bull versus all other nine teams? And that was a very lasting advantage. It was a very noticeable advantage. As soon as we got into testing, where everybody else was dealing with being a damn dolphin, Red Bull, not so much. All right, and that was because of Adrian Newey and his red hand notebook. But now that we're going into 2026, we're returning to Big Paul in the Super Chat said, what's up, fam? Quickly checking in from work. Smash the like, y'all. Hope everyone has a safe and blessed week and a joyful holiday season. Peace and love. Paul, peace and love to you, Paul. We might have to talk, bro. I might I might be going back to an old school, man. Might be going back to some old GM metal, bro, just to kind of get my mind right when I can and just go out in the garage and work on some metal, man. But let's talk about Audi working on this. So here's what I got. Here's my opinion, okay? And here's why I think Audi might be at a somewhat of a, a development advantage over the other teams to a degree. And that reason is because of this right here. And this is Mercedes. But no, matter of fact, this is, this is Mercedes. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that last because I honestly think Mercedes might have an advantage too. But really, it's because of Porsche. And the reason I say because of Porsche is because of the GTS3. GT3 RS. If anybody knows anything about the GT3 RS, this car is definitely a car that already facilitates active aero. This Porsche already facilitates active aero. And it's been that way since they developed it. And so now with the point that you have a car a production car, but production cars yield data. They yield information. And with them inviting this, so if you've ever, if you've never looked at the GT3 RS and you don't know anything about this car, what I'm going to tell you is that swan hung wing and in the front fascia, there are air ducts that work simultaneously with each other to open up, to impact downforce with this car. So why would you, why would I say, well, Jay, I mean, it's a, it's a Porsche, it's on the streets, not Audi, they're owned by Volkswagen. This information is shared with them in both companies. And why I'm saying is, why, while it's, this car is not a Formula One car, while it's not, not on the Formula One grid, Porsche does have kernel knowledge of how Front active and rear active arrow working tandemly together will impact the characteristics of a chassis. And you can legitimately build a lot off of that. There's a lot of information. There's a lot of data points 
that you can take from that car, from that experience, from this development, and say, hey, as soon as we see characteristics of this in that Formula One car, we already have data plot points that can tell us what direction to go into versus other teams. Because some of these teams haven't developed cars that work simultaneously front arrow and rear active arrow. They haven't developed that. The only other team that I showed you that I know that kind of has a similarity of that is the Mercedes AMG one because the AMG one has front and rear active arrow. They help that car perform in that way. But Porsche has a closer example of this car. They have a closer example of these functional systems. What's up on all Ms. Dino? What's up, Bayesian? What's up, Sean? And with them having the information of how these two surfaces open and counteract each other, not counteract, but open to work with each other to produce more downforce, they're going to be able to use that information. And while as I say it's not going to be an apples-to-apples apples comparison, it's within the same fruit bowl. And with it being in the same fruit bowl, you can find your way through those woods of problems and hangups and challenges a lot more efficiently than other teams might find themselves in. So I, I, would, I would encourage you, if you're not the biggest car person outside of Formula One, I would encourage you to go and take a look at the GT3 RS functioning aero systems. And then maybe you will say to yourself, you know what? might have a point right there. Their, their Audi might come in here a bit more competitive than what the average team that has never experienced these systems but are employing people and engineers and aerodynamicists and, and scientists to explain how these forces are going to act on these surfaces and how you're going to be able to change these surfaces to try to improve and be more efficient. Porsche is going to have a good foundation to start on. A very good foundation to start on, in my opinion. And so this car, this production, and this car is a bad mother effort. Shut your mouth. I'm trying to tell you the GC3 RS is no hope. With them having this development, with them working with similar surfaces on the underside of this car as in Formula One. Now, this is not anywhere near as intricate as the floor on a Formula One car, but it's still a floor. It's still got similar veins. It's still got veins. It still has to, it still has to damn work out airflow. And it has to work out airflow with incorporating front and rear active aero. So yeah, what's going on, Julie? So yeah, I do think Audi is going to have a bit more knowledge and experience using the GT3 RS systems and being able to apply reactions to active arrow on the body. I do. It's, I think it's going to be, I think, I think it's going to be one of the things that's going to at least help them maybe be one of those first teams that will seem more competitive before these bigger dogs get their head wrapped around it and they're going to take off on development and then we see them kind of fade back. And I'm not even saying Audi's going to shoot to the front. I'm not saying they're going to win the first race, second, third race. But to see them strongly in the first four or three races in the mid-pack, and then once all the big dogs start getting information and start looking at things and taking things back, CFD and doing everything with the, you know, with flow viz and looking at Porsche or looking at the Audi car with flow viz and taking those pictures and kind of extrapolating all that information because we know Mercedes, we know Ferrari. Well, I ain't got a lot of hope for Ferrari, but Aston Martin for sure with Adrian Newey right now, Hell yeah, it's going to happen. But yeah, I think it's going to be really interesting to see how they use that information. I think it's going to be really interesting to see if we ever see any type of correlation or comparisons in the Formula One in 2026 about the GT3 RS and how Audi used that information from Porsche to, to kind of nail and kind of dial in this new era of regs. It could be, it could be crazy. And Mercedes with the AMG One, yeah, it runs on top, but they got a lot. They got some active error on this car, too. So they they might, where I was kind of counting Mercedes out a bit. I'm not going front. I was counting Mercedes out a bit on the aero side of things versus the power unit side of things. But then I also thought about the AMG one as I was thinking about the GT3 RS. And I said, maybe Mercedes might not be that far off as I kind of thought they might be 
in regard to the active arrow side of things. They might actually be okay. So I'm I'm thinking that we could see Mercedes maybe be a bit better than what I thought they were going to be too. Mercedes just might might kind of pull Mercedes. I didn't count Mercedes out on power unit, but now that I'm considering the AMG one and some of the things that they've done with it, I mean, literally this car, literally the AMG one is a, is a street legal formula one car. <laughs> really? That's what it is. The, the AMG one is literally a street legal formula one car. So I'm, I'm kind of starting to read, Clock just a tad, just kind of reclock just a tad about what they might be able to do. So we'll we'll see what happens with that. And um and just just keep running. And big shout out, big shout out to Miss Dino's little one for I think it's K1 Speeds he's racing at. I think it's, it might be K1, but the junior karting leagues in there. Big shout out to him just continuously improving and enjoying the hobby and enjoying what he's doing and hope maybe hopefully we'll see him on a on a governed real karting track in a racing system where we'll be able to keep up with him on points and he'll be within you know might see him at karting tracks coming to a karting tracks near you you know going into probably probably will be what L0206 would be the class that I would expect he might be in. L0206, I don't know if he's going to end up doing Cadet Green or anything like that, but I'm looking forward to see if he's going to make that next jump into a system that could legitimately start taking him into some different things. That would be real interesting for sure because that's what's going to have to happen. He's going to have to jump out of the K1. The K1 carding track is going to have to jump into the L0206 class, whether that be Cadet Green or Juniors going to need to jump in there and then we might be watching and seeing a young man come up racing in a motorsport discipline right out of the wolf pack that'd be cool as hell so big congrats to the little man coming on up for sure and so i'm really looking forward to see what mercedes what audi is going to do i already told you all in the other video we need to let ferrari earn earn our respect again in this new season, I'm not giving them shit. Miss Dino, that is the goal. I'm gonna need to. Hey, I'm trying to tell you. Hey, you need information. You need to understand what what to expect when you go into that. Hey, let me know. I went through it, and I'm telling you right now. You you gotta you gotta get ready because I I spent a lot of money, um, just in the years that she wanted to race. So definitely, hey, all the information I got can definitely get you in there and try to help you understand as a parent, especially what I learned. So then I was hoping to talk to y'all about this. Audi, this ain't going to work. This ain't going to work. This is, this is just not going to work. This, you know, this, this livery is not going to work at all. It is definitely blah. Is nowhere near attractive. And it looks like who the hell didn't finish. That's what this looks like. Who the hell didn't finish. I don't want to see Audi come in to Formula One with this shit. I don't want to see Audi come in like this. I'm, I'm expecting more from Audi and this ain't it. Okay. This livery's not this livery is not what I want to see y'all come into Formula One with. It's very plain Jane boring, and it looks as if you didn't finish it. What I would like to see Audi come into Formula One like is not this. Look at that. Come on. Who, who is excited about seeing this? This is not how you make a splash. Now, now, truth be told, how you make a true splash is in performance and how you finish racing and how you get on the podium. I understand that. But can you look good doing it? Because this doesn't look good. This looks like some 1960s plain model paint. This looks like some of the plain models I see back in the 1960s or 70s. Real one, two, three color hard lines and send it out. But if you could come out like this, now that could be nice. This could be, this could be nice. And I'm not even saying it's got to be this elaborate. But this is better 
than that. Because that looks like crap, and this looks like pizzazz. This, yeah, this is how we want to see Audi come in. Definitely. That other livery crap is not finished. And I'm hoping they just did that as to just say, I'm even hoping that when they do the livery launch, it ain't that. I'm hoping when they do the livery launch, it's not this. But if they did do this, I'm hoping that what they come out the first day of racing and testing is something more like this. But Audi, don't, don't, don't come to Formula One with this. Please don't. It's not, ain't nothing cool about it. Nothing cool about it. You want to go through testing on this and show us a real rendering of what you're really going to come with? Cool, but don't come with something more like this. That's all I'm trying to say. So I don't know where some of you all sit on what you think Audi might do. If you've never looked at the GT3 RS, go check it out. Do a little bit of research on its front active arrow and its, and its front fascia air ducts and how it really works where these vents are really functional air vents and they function because of that. Because even, I'm going to tell you right now, even the top portion, even the top portion of those vents that you see in the front fender, they act in working group with the front active arrow that's in the fascia. Everything that you see here is a real functioning vent for airflow. It's not there for show. It looks good and it is good, but it actually functions good. And Maybe possibly could we even see a Porsche might kind of grace us with getting back into Formula One if they would only have them sell the junior Red Bull team, which it shouldn't be two teams on Red Bull. You heard what Stinky One said when we were in Discord. It's crazy. They don't even hide it. They know they have two teams, four drivers, and four cars. Can we get rid of that Red Bull team and actually get Porsche in here? That would be cool to me. But then if we do that, is it kind of not the same thing as – Audi and Porsche being out here kind of it's kind of a little conflict of interest. But my main thing is to say, can we get another team to occupy that seat in Formula One, that spot in Formula One, besides for it being a Red Bull team? That's that's what I would like to see. And that would be that would be fire to me. You know, so, you know, we'll see what happens. A, A lot of this is interesting, but I am serious. I do think that the information that they could possibly collect from Porsche, that GT3 RS could be very informative. It could be very helpful for them in the, in the championship series and help them progress from there. See how long we're going to stay in this era regulations before anything changes. Don't also forget we're going to kind of dip and dive into this as it comes and it goes. But Audi, please. I'm just asking you. I'm not begging you. I ain't begging you for shit. This is your life. It's your car. You do what you want to do. What's going on, Mary Beanie? But don't come to Formula One with this crap. Don't, 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 don't come with that. Don't, don't come with that. Please don't. Come with this. All right. So let me know what you all think in the comment section. Can how how to use that information? If they are using that information, where do you think they're going to be in 2026? In, in being a new team, be legit, be be objective, and. Be realistic. I don't think Audi's coming in here shooting up to the top of the charts, top three teams. I don't think that's happening. But I do think anywhere, you know, eight to 11 is legit. And if in the first part of the season, because they've had this experience being six, seven, and then kind of fading back as the other teams that have had a lot of experience in Formula One get their grips on it, we'll see what happens. So we'll see you all later. Like I said, again, I apologize for the late live. Situations happen. I had to tend to that first and get a chance to change the time. All right. Peace and love. See you on the next one. Let me know what you think below in the comment section.